Hi everyone. Welcome to Gnan Cloud Garage. So in this session, I am going to talk about Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform, and the mainly Red Hat OpenShift is a one of the enterprise grade Kubernetes platform. So in this session, I am mainly focusing on basics. Okay. So first, here is the agenda. What is included in Red Hat OpenShift and what is container? How do we create a container? And where are the container images stored? And what else image registry consists of? And how is the application portable portability with VM? And how is the application portability with containers? And what is pod? And how to configure pod? And what included, included in pods? OK, so let's start with the first point. So what's included in Red Hat OpenShift means Red Hat OpenShift, as we know, it's a enterprise grade Kubernetes. That means it consists of container host and runtime. Here container host is you can use Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system or we can use Red Hat core operating system that should be run on a bare metal or you can run it on a virtual machine. That is our container host and enterprise grade Kubernetes. That means Kubernetes means it's an open source product. Enterprise Kubernetes means we'll also get a additional tools and also the support we additional te and tech support. We can get it using this product and validate integrations. That means Red Hat can be integrated with our third party integrations. Like if even if you want to integrate with the public cloud, hybrid cloud, we have a facility options and integrated container registry. That means to store all our container images, we require a container image registry. This is also no need for a external container registry. It's an integrated container registry facility available with Red Hat OpenShift and developer workflows and easy access to services okay and another point let's start with a basic even if before we go into the container and kubernetes concept we need some basic points so what is container so container means a container is the smallest computing unit and normally if you see within the icon this is the icon is for a container and an application packaged with dependencies. That means within a container A, we have an application one. This application one have a dependencies. Like if you want to install the Internet Explorer, we need we need a operating system. But in the, within the operating system, it will use some dynamic link libraries or dependencies. Same way for application. Even if you want to install any other applications like WinSCP, put the application you want to install on Windows Server, it requires some dependencies. So that is the best. And this container, let's say container app, app one and app one dependencies. But every container have a different dependencies like container A, container B and so on. Uh, just for general example, if you see the diagram have a normal containers. Now it's all in a different colors. Normally, let's say one container consists of some grocery items and another container may con consist of different type of items, any of the metals and some other materials may come with a clothing material or anything in a container. That means each container have a, some different items. Similarly, within our containers also, we can run different type of applications and those should be containerized applications only. And this application have a, some dependencies. That point only, second point, an application packaged with dependencies. And this application is decoupled or dissociated from the operating system and becomes a serverless function. So here is the one example. Let's say we have a VMware virtualization. It is running, a hypervisor is running on hardware. On top of the hypervisor, we can create a virtual machine. So within the virtual machine, we can install the guest operating system as a Red Hat Enterprise Linux operating system on top of the Red Hat Enterprise Linux, or you can install a Red Hat core operating system. So that means RHCOS, either RHCL or RHCOS you can use 
on top of the RHL and RHCOS, by default, these operating systems are providing a container capabilities. Within this case to OS, we can create a multiple container. But this container functionality is, it is disassociated. That means this will not depend on a, our guest operating system, RHL. Even if you run RHL directly on bare metal also, it won't depend on a bare metal. That means it's a completely decoupled or another word is disassociated from the operating system and becomes a server less function okay so hope you clear about the third point now let's talk about how do we create a container so containers are created from container images like even if you want to install a virtual machine with any of the guest operating system windows or linux we have to mount a virtual cd we have to mount a iso file virtual iso file or you can mount a cd virtual cd so this is a usual method similarly even for the container also containers can be created from a container image that container image is nothing but a binary file same like our iso images those are also binary files okay and another question where are the container images stored so container images are stored in an image registry okay this image registry consists of multiple container images okay and now let's talk about what else image registry consists of so an image registry or image repository contains all versions of an image in the image registry. So image registry, normally let's say we have a two types of registries here. So container image types. We have one my registry front end and my registry Mongo, okay, like MongoDB. So for this container registry, we have a different type of versions are available. And these versions are here we mentioned contains all versions. Those all versions we give an example of four versions. Let's say it start with a front end 1.0, 1.1, 2.0 and latest version. These are all the all versions of an image in the image registry. And similarly, if you have another image, my registry MongoDB. Within this container image, we have a MongoDB 3.4, 3.6, 3.7. Seven latest. Suppose if you compare with a Red Hat image, normally Red Hat ISO file, how we have, we have previous versions are Red Hat 8 series, 8.0, 8.1, 8.2 and so on. And latest version we have Red Hat Enterprise Linux 9. So similarly, this container images also, even if you compare with the Windows operating system, we have a Windows Server 2016, 2019 and latest version 2022. That means this all the versions are changed. So within your image registry, you can maintain a different type of versions. OK, so hope you clear about this point. Now, another point is how is the application portability with virtual machine generally? VMs are not portable across hypervisor and do not provide portable packaging for application. So we do not have a portable facility. And if you see the virtual machine, if you want to run it on your workstation, we can use VMware workstation or any other third party tool. And we can create OS, guest OS dependencies. We can run the applications on your guest VM. And that means there is a dependency with the laptop hypervisor, works, uh, type 2 hypervisor. And even if you direct a hardware bare metal, if you run any operating system, we can run the application. It needs up OS, OS dependencies and application. That means it's not a portable. And even in the vSphere environment, also not portable. And the private cloud, that means it's a VMware Cloud Foundation, here also not portable. And even if you run it on a public cloud, our native public clouds, AWS, Azure, and also Google Cloud, here in this scenario also, it's not a portable format, okay? Now, let's talk about how is the application portability with containers? This is with a virtual machine. Now, we can compare with a container. Suppose container means RHCL container plus RHCL host. That means container host, it's equivalent to guaranteed portability across any infrastructure 
okay so we are using the word portability portability means one general example is for example suppose if i open any any browser also even in the internet if you type here portable applications you can run here any of the portable application this portable application general functionality is there is no installation file you can copy it in a windows system or you can copy it into a mac os or linux os you can launch that application best example is let's say within our operating system like windows os or linux or mac os i don't want to install a mozilla firefox or google chrome you can download a google chrome or mozilla firefox portable application that portable already it's consists of a folder with multiple files there is a setup.exe file no need to install just if you launch the google chrome.exe it will launch the browser that is a portable that means it's easy to move from one system to another system similarly one server to another server and so on okay the same functionality for containers also so containers provide high density and efficiency at the expensive expense of isolation okay and if you see in the frustration scenario even though if you prepare one container this container you can move it to bare metal also so even in the bare metal there is no dependency on operating system it's completely isolated okay and virtualization also same and even in the private cloud also same scenario and public cloud also same scenario so that's the reason we mentioned guaranteed portability across any infrastructure here any infrastructure means either on premises virtualization or private cloud or even a public cloud even in your workstation and bare metal environments okay that is called any infrastructure okay so hope you clear about this point in simple terms virtual machine is not portable and containers are portable okay and what is pod so containers are wrapped in pods and which are units of deployment and management so pod may contain one or more containers okay suppose if you see the diagram this is the one representation of container and or else the another conceptual diagram is within a pod we have a one container and right side if you see within a pod we have a two containers okay and pod can be accessible with ip address so each pod have a different ip address okay and pod may contain one or more containers not only two even you can have a more than two containers okay now another point how to configure pod so pods configuration is defined in a deployment suppose if you see the left side file the doc similar like a docker file so within the docker file we have to mention the image name and replica how many replicas you want let's say if you mention three it will be a three replicas and what is the label name and cpu memory and storage hard resource requirements if you mention this detail accordingly the pod will be conf uh, configured within the deployment okay so either you can configure with a three replica or more than three replicas okay and another point what's included in pods so services provide internal load balancing and services discovery across pods if you see the diagram we have a container pod with one single container and each pod represent with a different ip address and one pod is like a we represented specifically for front end and another three pods for back end pods so this back end role so this back end roles pods we can access through only the back end services load balancer ip address okay load balancer ip will distribute the load among these pods okay and another point so apps can talk to each other via services and that is using a application programming interface api so invoke backend api calls okay through api calls it will talk to each other vice versa from front end to back end and back end to front end and routes add services to external load balancer and provide a readable url for the application let's say if you see in this diagram we mention as curl http colon slash slash on website name like app iphone production dot company dot com whatever company you have like hp.com or redhat.com like that and route will be routed to the this same url and the backend services will automatically distribute the load to the respective pods okay and what's included in the pod the last final point is projects isolate apps across environments 
teams, groups, and department. Like if you notice the diagram, so it's across any environment means it the it will be isolated. Suppose if you compare with a virtual machine within the ES Success Host, we can configure a 10 virtual machine, but each 10 virtual machines are completely isolated. Similarly, even our parts also, if you assign few parts for one project, that project means payment development project and payment production project and catalog project, inventory project. There is some different names. So all these projects are isolated applications across any environment teams. Even the teams are different team, development team, production team, inventory and catalog team and the groups and departments. It is all or it won't communicate each other. If you see this diagram, let's say the user is trying to access the specific development team, only the payment development team only he can access and the user cannot access the other departments. Okay, that's why that is the representation here. Clear? So that's it. Hope you clear about the, some of the enterprise grade Kubernetes basics. Okay. Yeah, the, additional concepts I will cover in the later session. Thank you. If you are watching this video first time, please do view, like, share and subscribe to the Gnan Cloud Garage channel. If you are already subscribed, I appreciate all your support. Bye for now.